Welcome back to Switch to Linux with our desktop environment series. And today we come to Deepin. So for clarity, there is a Deepin OS and a Deepin desktop environment. When I say Deepin in this video, I'm gonna be referring to the Deepin desktop environment because that's what we're talking about. If I refer to the Deepin OS, I will say Deepin OS. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the Deepin OS distribution had a long history. It went back, I forget exactly how far back. I didn't research all the history on that. And it used GNOME for a period of time. But then they wanted to come out, and in 2013, the first version of the Deepin desktop environment came out, which was basically a customized and modified GNOME. So it was GNOME with a bunch of customizations, not unlike the start of Cinnamon, the start on Budgie, and a few other, uh, a few other different uh, desktop environments that are based on GNOME. In version 3, which rolled out December 31st, 2015, was the complete complete divergence away from GNOME when Deepin became its own thing. They started introducing more Qt apps and the desktop really took on this highly polished view that we have now. Obviously it goes without saying the Deepin desktop environment was created for Deepin OS, duh. But in 2015, with this pure divergence off of GNOME, other distros started to pick up Deepin as an environment and started adding it to their repos. Now, the good news is a lot of different distros took on Deepin so you can install it, but the bad news is not a lot of those were updated. And so you have a little bit of spotty support for the Deepin desktop environment, possibly because it is developed in China. And some people just have an inherent bias against software out of China. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it spies, sometimes it doesn't. There have actually been several videos addressing does the Deepin OS spy on you or not. I have actually done a few of those videos. QuidSub did some. Now it turns out that in the in the uh, Deepin OS, the software store, which is not packaged as part of the Deepin desktop environment, had an analytics-like tracking script, sort of like Google Analytics, but for the store, it would track everything that you did in there with whatever type of data they were collecting. Now, if you wanted to use Deepin on GNOME or Arch or something else, that was not an included package, so you didn't have that to worry about. There's not been any known situations of the desktop environment itself being a spy-like thing, but still the reputation is out there. Now, as far as the environment itself, one of the cool things about it is how sleek and modern the desktop is. It is without a doubt one of the most polished modern desktops in that it takes on some of the slight translucency that you will get inside of, of a uh, Windows 7 effect. I, I can't remember if Windows 10 has translucency or not. I don't know, I don't use Windows 10. Uh, but uh, it just does, has a lot of these modern effects, a lot of these modern fields. Your settings are all pulled out into one panel on the side. Now Budgie used to do that in the early stages of Budgie, which on a surface looks good. It actually looks nice and clean, but is actually very difficult to navigate. It's one of the downsides of Deepin is how the settings is over there. It's novel, it's neat. You look at it and you go, wow, that's cool. But when it gets down to actually using it, it actually becomes more of a pain to use than to not use. You almost wish it was, which is why I think it was a good thing that Budgie separated the settings off of the panel and created a separate box just for those settings. Deepin never did that. There are some other issues with it. Uh, we'll get into those in a little bit, but the one of the powers of Deepin is it's, it's one of the most polished desktops in that it doesn't have a lot of different settings and options, but still it looks very modern, but you can set it up to look just like a Mac or a Windows environment without fighting with anything. Very quick, simple options right on the settings panel itself. They're not in the Deepin settings, they're on the panel. Right click the panel, there's options there. You can put the taskbar as a full size or as a partial size. You can have the menu pop up as like a Windows start menu or as a Mac dashboard type view. So any of those are all options that you have. There's a lot of fine detail paid to just the little integration on 
the individual built-in supported apps. But I've actually found that most of the most of the apps that come with Deepin tend to be not quite as good as the built-in default apps that you will get in a GNOME or in a Cinnamon or a Budgie, well, which is mostly GNOME ones, or a Mate or an XFCE. In other words, there are the apps are all there, but they're not as easy to use. They're, they're, they're polished, but they don't work as well. It's kind of one of those things. Not to say that the desktop environment is bad. I like it. I ran it for a while when I did a video comparing Deepin uh, OS versus Manjaro Deepin. Who did the Deepin desktop environment better? You'll have to watch that video to see what my final result of that was. But I found after you, you start running it and it's very nice. But after a period of time, when the novelty starts to wear off, it actually become, it starts to become a little bit annoying to me. Whereas something like Cinnamon, it's very clean, it's very easy to run for me. It never becomes annoying. And so I, I never, anytime I boot into Deepin, I usually boot back off of it within a few hours because the notification sounds can't be as easily edited. You can't toggle them on or off for specific applications. And if you are toggling, like for example, every time I get an email, the notification sound rings twice, once for the application and once for the system. Whereas a well-polished system, if the if there knows the notification is coming in from the application, it does not not do a system one, or you can disable the system one. You can disable all notifications or no notifications. There's no in-between middle ground, which is definitely one of the downsides of the Deepin desktop. Overall, it's very polished. The notification sounds we I mentioned. There is a file manager bug. You may not notice this if you're just testing it, but if you happen to be running deep and on a computer with multiple hard drives in it, every single time you open your file manager, it's going to give you a login prompt for every other hard disk on your computer. So for example, I use my computer, there's a Windows 8 hard drive in there, there's a Linux Mint hard drive in there, and I run the system off of an external hard drive. Every time I open up the file manager and deepen, I get three separate login prompts. Don't know exactly why. So one of those little bugs. And of course, we already mentioned that some of the built-in tools are not quite as nice as the polished ones. However, if you're a Linux power user, you don't really care what the built-in tools are. You have your favorite go-to tools for everything anyway. So that may or may not be a, a selling point for you. Uh, just whatever. As far as your overall pros of the system, I do, did find it is, it is very polished. It is without a doubt one of the most beautiful desktop environments in the Linux world, and I don't even think anything else comes up to a, a close second. It is just gorgeous in looks. It is also very easy to use. You don't need to read through documentation. It's extraordinarily intuitive, and it it just has this good, clean, easy to use feel. There are some cons. We've already mentioned most of these. Number one, it might be a con for you that it's created by a Chinese company. You have to weigh those various options for yourself. The uh, Another con we already mentioned, uh, again, there's some bugs. There's there's enough little bugs. There There's nothing large, compounding, huge, but there's enough little bugs that will kind of drive you a little bit crazy after a while. And it does have limited support. I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of distros picked it up quickly, but they didn't always keep it running. So Mar Arch right now, Linux, has the full, always most up-to-date Deepin. I just booted into Deepin on my Arch computer right now just to have a quick look around prior to doing the video. Everything seems to work as expected. Manjaro, they had some bugs. There used to be a community edition of Manjaro Deepin. They've dropped it because of some bugs. You can still install Deepin on Arch. It will work for you. You can also install it. It's one of the options to install if you're running the Manjaro Architect. So if you want to run Deepin, Deepen on Manjaro, you might want to do the architect or just install Manjaro and run through some basic Arch tutorials to install the Deepen desktop environment. Ubuntu has a build, but last time I played with it, which was only about two months ago, it was an out-of-date version. The system wouldn't work. It would completely sync. What I was trying to do is I was trying to put Deepen on Linux Mint to see how that would work. It wouldn't work at all. It turns out that the packages for Deepen in that 
uh, PPA were just too old. I'm not sure if there's newer ones out there or not. I just don't know. But as of the last time I tested it on an Ubuntu base build, it didn't work. There is full support on Gen 2. Fedora just added Deepin support. When I tested that out not long ago, it did work just fine. And there is some OpenSUSE support, which I, I'm unclear as to uh, how much uh, support there is. I have not looked at the OpenSUSE build of Deepin. So that is the Deepin desktop environment, where you can get it, how you can use it. Of course, the cleanest, most polished is probably deep in OS, but I had some reservations about that. If you do want to try it, I would probably try it under either Fedora, which has it as a as an installation option, or maybe using Arch or Manjaro. So those are the places I would test it out if you are worried about the, the deep in OS privacy issues. So that brings us to the end of the deep in desktop environment. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.